Welcome to the January the 25th, 2000 taping of It Happened in Grand Prairie as we bring you the history of our city and some of the people that happened to make history in our city and they're continuing to make it to this very day. We're very delighted today as we celebrate Black History Month in the city of Grand Prairie and on this It Happened in Grand Prairie to have two very special people with us, an outstanding couple. And we're so pleased, first of all, to present his honor, Mr. Norris Stretch Rideau, president of the Grand Prairie ISD Board of Education. And your honor, welcome uh, to the set. Thank you. It's yes. a pleasure to be here. Oh, Appreciate the invitation. Yes, it's a real pleasure to have you on the set and get you this still uh, stretch rideau, as you are very <laughs> fondly known yeah. uh, by many of the people in Green Prairie, Texas, because when you say, Nor do you know Norris Rideau? And they say, well, now, that name is mighty familiar. <laughs> do you know Stretch? Oh, yes, yes. we know Stretch. <laughs> and next, we're so glad you brought your beloved wife, Geneva, with you today. Welcome to the set, my Thank dear. Thank you. It's glad to be here. Great. All right. Now, uh, it's going to be exciting for you to look out into your camera, Stretch, and uh, mm -hmm. tell us about the real Stretch Rideau, where you were born, <laughs> when you were born, the names of your parents, and, and the names of any of the, uh, your brothers and sisters okay. that you'd like to drop in this history tape. Okay. I was born in Beaumont, Texas. All right. February 19, 1954. 1954. <laughs> yeah. That was a good year. <laughs> that was a very good year. Yeah, that was a very good. In year. fact, I was I was born in a house on uh, Goliad Street, and that house still remains there in Beaumont. It does. And name uh, your parents. My parents. My mother uh, was named Vena Weston. Vena Weston. Okay. And of course, she has passed. She she passed in 1994 from her aneurysm. All right. My uh, father is Walter Rideau. All right, Walter mm -hmm. Rideau. Yes. Is and he still in the Beaumont area? Yes, he still resides in Beaumont. I do have a brother in Beaumont who's okay. next to me in age. I'm the youngest in the family. Uh -huh. uh, the brother in Beaumont is named Don. Okay. And I have a brother in uh, Grand Prairie. His name is Larry. Okay. And my oldest brother is Walter Jr., and he lives in DeSoto, Texas. In DeSoto, Texas. Mm -hmm. Well, you have nearly all of them up there. <laughs> yes, <laughs> so in fact, that's how I got here because my brother in DeSoto, Texas graduated from Bishop and settled here in Dallas and mm -hmm. kind of uh, encouraged me to come here. All right. Now, uh, being raised near Beaumont, uh, did you go to school in the Beaumont area? And if yes. so, where did you go to school? And, and tell us a little bit about elementary and Stretch Rideau when you were a young man. Well, I went to a school by the name of Pipkin, and it was right. in walking distance of my house. All right. Uh, probably less than a block. All right. And I can recall the first day of school, I was uh, bad. Oh, you were bad. I was bad. And um, the teacher um, had to discipline me. I Corporal see. punishment. On the first day? <laughs> On the first day. Mercy. On the first day. <laughs> and I really do appreciate that. Uh, it, it changed my life. Yes. You know, I, um, do you remember the teacher's name? Yes, Miss Carr. Yeah. C-A-R-R. -R. I surely uh -huh, remember Carr. her name. Mm -hmm. And I, I remember that. Uh, that uh, swatting. All right. <laughs> when, you, when you were in uh, elementary school, and uh, did you have a favorite elementary subject or a favorite teacher or someone that really was a pal to you and, and encouraged you to learn? Well, I, I've always progressed in my uh, academics while I was in school. I see. Um, there is one teacher, um, my fourth grade teacher by the name of Mr. Griffin. Okay. He was a uh, very important to me in that he uh, helped me to get in Boy Scouts, mm -hmm. Cub Scouts. He would subscribe to various magazines for me. Oh, uh, wonderful. And give me advice. So I still remember Mr. Griffin. He was more than a teacher. He was a friend, wasn't he? Oh, yes. He, he was a friend. Okay. Mm -hmm. All and right. And then from uh, elementary, tell us about Stretch. Which way did you go, young man? Well, my, um, from elementary, I went to uh, uh, a secondary school by the name of Dick Darling. Okay. And at that particular time, I think uh, we had integration for a couple of years. So I went to an integrated school uh, my seventh grade year and part of my eighth grade year. Okay. Um, my family moved to another side of town, so I was transferred out of that school and ended up going to Lincoln Junior High School. Okay. Um, I played some sports, uh, basketball, played a little football, but my love was music. music. I started playing the drums, yeah. 
and I put all my time as far as my extracurricular time into music. Into the music. jazz band, the marching band, the concert band, symphony band, yes. So, all the good stuff. All the good stuff. Yes, yeah. all right. And uh, then you went on to high school where? Went, went to high school uh, in Beaumont, Charlton Pilot High School. I graduated there in 1972. Okay. Of course, I was the uh, treasurer of my class. Okay. Uh, I worked on it's the It's because you had an honest face. <laughs> <laughs> I worked on the yearbook there. Oh, man. Uh, and uh, was in the band. And I had an opportunity to be the drum major, and I turned that down. I didn't uh -huh. want to do that. Uh -huh. Yeah. Front, that's too front and center for Stretch to know at that time. <laughs> well, I, Where did you I, get the nickname Stretch? Oh, I'd like to the, have that on the record. That's uh, that's that's one of the most embarrassing questions Is I have. But I'll, I'll answer. No, no, no. It's not a secret. It's not a secret. It's just kind of embarrassing to me when I when I tell you the truth about it. Um, when I was a senior in high school. Uh, after school one day, I went home and there was a Western on television. Mm -hmm. And as I was watching the Western, there was a guy by the name of Stretch. Unfortunately, Stretch climbed up on a water tower and jumped off and committed suicide. I see. And uh, um, after I uh, graduated from high school, I went to a Sir Ross State University in Alpine, Texas. All right. At that time, I told everybody my name was Stretch. Huh. So, but I, I just stayed at Sir Ross for one year and I mm -hmm. transferred back home to Lamar University. Yeah. So I was back home, uh, nobody knew about my nickname then, until I met my wife, uh, which was my girlfriend at the time, and I yeah. told her about Stretch, and then she started calling me Stretch, and it just kind of caught on from there. Well, that was, that was a, <laughs> a real exciting, you were, you were trying really to be an imposter, wasn't you? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh. Well, yeah. as you uh, went in, who encouraged you the most in your young life to, to go on to college and to you just knew you were going to college, or did someone really see well, that you were programmed that way? Well, at the time I was growing up, we, we kind of looked at two options at that time. You either go to college or you go to military. Uh -huh. you know, I guess in my family, there was, there was no other option there, college uh -huh. or military. My father had always told me, ever since I was a little boy, if you don't want to work hard, uh, get an education. And as I look back upon that, I think he was saying, if I don't want to uh, um, do manual labor, do manual labor, right? Yes. If I don't want to do manual labor, go to college because I do work hard in my profession right now. Yes, but, you do. But he was talking about manual labor, yeah. and and I always heard that. You know, uh, my my family they didn't get a chance to get an education. In fact, my mom was illiterate. Uh, my father is self-taught, but he wanted us to have an education, and that's what he, that's what so he promoted. So he's your main mentor, wasn't Yes, you? yes. Your main mm -hmm. mentor. We're going to yeah. leave you right here at high school <laughs> just before you've gone to college okay. at the encouragement of your dad, but we've got to get Geneva in on this. Okay. <laughs> She's just, uh, Geneva, look out to your camera and tell us about your family and anything you'd like to tell us about your history. Um, I am from Jasper, Texas, a small town in East Texas where uh, most people would not have even heard of until the bird dragon, but unfortunately I'm, Jasper is well known now, but uh, it's a small town and rural and uh, I'm one of 12 children, I'm number 10. All right. um, my mother was um, Ollie Mae Grant and uh, my father is Davis Mobley. And, um, we uh, were encouraged to work hard, study hard. Um, my father, he liked farming, so he grew a lot of vegetables as we were growing up. And I didn't like that too much, so I decided I better excel in school because we didn't have many options when I was growing up. You either were at school practicing for something or you were at home helping dad in the farm, on yes. the farm. So um, I got real active in school at, at a young age. Yes. And so I, I excelled with uh, academics. 4-H Club was really um, alive and well at that time when I was growing up. And I was a cheerleader. Uh, we went to Jasper High School and we integrated when I was like maybe in the sixth or seventh grade. Yes. And it was a very tr smooth transition. And uh, I had a, a fun high school memories, real fun. All right, now let's get back to your elementary, okay. the elementary school that you attended, the name of it, and okay. your favorite elementary teacher. Uh, J.H. Rowe Elementary is no longer there, of course, after yes. integration. And my favorite elementary teacher would have had to have been, I found it ironic that it was my fourth grade teacher, Stretch said it was his fourth grade teacher, Miss Coleman, Miss Florence Coleman, and she um, 
inspired me a lot. I was good in reading and math, and she really um, uh, encouraged me and motivated me and made me uh, kind of like the lead of the class. I was pretty shy. Yeah. And she I would always ask me to lead something in those areas. And we had competition where we would do, she said, sixth grade math. And we thought it was, and um, long division, and it was just really neat. She was a very influential teacher in my elementary. And in high school, uh, you were a cheerleader and all mm -hmm. of the good things, but did you have a favorite mentor or teacher that encouraged you not only to excel there, but to let's keep climbing? Um, to encourage me to college, yes, it was Miss Moore. She was my typing teacher, mm -hmm. and she wanted to see me uh, go into business. And that was my goal at first. And then I had a math teacher that thought I was born to be a history teacher. I'm sorry, a math teacher. So he encouraged me to go to college and be, become a math teacher. Yes. Those two, uh, and then uh, with their encouragement, did you know you were going to college? Did you get a scholarship or did you have to hustle? No, I did not know. I, like I said, I was one of 12. And in my home, when you finished high school, you went to uh, work. You found a job or you went to a college. Uh -huh. uh, my sisters had gone to technical school. Uh, my oldest sister, Shirley, was a beautician. And the next oldest, Faye, she was a lab technician. So I was the first one to think of going to a four-year school. Uh -huh. And my father was very apprehensive financially. You know, he felt like we couldn't, we couldn't do that. So my principal, my high school principal, met with him and encouraged him that I could go on a grant. Great. That my grades were good and I had the drive, so not to worry about money. And my parents were very apprehensive because they've never had to sign for financial aid or anything. Yes. And they did. So I, I, I would have to say my principal encouraged my parents, who they really respected, our yes. high school principal. Yes. That's wonderful. What a team having <laughs> that team working for you, wanting you to go to school. Yes. And where did you go? Lamar University in Beaumont. Lamar University in Beaumont. I majored in business administration because that's what I thought I wanted to do. And I could just hear my uh, ninth grade math teacher saying, you need to go into education. So I got a dual degree. I got a business administration degree and an education degree. Yes. All right. And graduated in? 1976. 1976. Where did you meet Stretch? At Lamar at in Lamar. Beaumont. At Lamar in Beaumont. Here, okay. You made a good choice when you <laughs> left, yeah. left that West Texas yeah. place and came back here to, to Lamar, yeah. didn't you? Yes, I, I did. All right. I made a very good choice. Y yes. Um, in fact, I was not doing well in college when I, I left. Um, in fact, after one year, I think I had like Nine, Is that Saul Ross? Saul Ross, yes. yes. Okay. I had like nine credits and I transferred on academic probation. Uh -huh. I see. It just gets like that every once yeah. in a while. Yeah, but two years later I had my bachelor's degree. Two years later? Yes, Stretch. yes. Stretch. What, now, what yes, was that motivating I, I factor in, in that? What was that difference in the motivation from Saul Ross back down to Lamar? Well, I was back, at, I was back home and... On home ground? Yes, on home ground. Uh, under my parents' supervision, and my supervision was not strict, but there was a, a high level of expectation. More and so there, they yeah, watched over you, didn't they? Yeah, and there was a high level of trust in me to do the right thing. No, I see. So that's, that's what I felt, right. not that they, they didn't chastise me or anything like that. What did you in finally fact, decide would be your major? Criminal justice. Criminal, criminal justice. justice? Yes. Mm -hmm. Was that always criminal justice down at Saul Ross? Well, it was uh, police science over there at Saul Ross. I see. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I decided to go back home, and I went to school year round. Yes. So, and you know, when you get with your parents, you don't want to embarrass your parents. You don't want to embarrass your your name. Yes. You know, and then with them putting trust in me and having high expectations, mm -hmm. I. Uh, Who graduated to live first, you or Geneva? I did. You did? S yes. Uh -huh. See, I finished high school in '72, and I had my bachelor's in '75. All right. And yeah. then after your bachelor, what did you do? I was um, encouraged by a professor by the name of Dr. Robert Frazier right. to go on to graduate school right. um, in Huntsville, Texas. Since All I was right. a criminal justice major, he thought I should go to Sam Houston State University. Excellent. He told me to, you know, when I get there to be responsible, reserve, and show restraint. That's what he told That's me. It. All right. Yeah. So uh, uh, he encouraged me to, to go to graduate school, and of course I went 
to graduate school on a grant. I think it was Good. a LEAP grant Good. at the time. Mm -hmm. uh, I knew I would work somewhere in criminal justice. Uh, Sam Houston is a very good criminal justice school and I had the opportunity to gain some experience by working in the prison so yeah. I, I worked as a prison guard. Oh that is mm -hmm. wonderful. And I got my master's degree. In got that. your master's degree from Sam Houston Sam State Houston University Strait. 1977. 1977. Mm -hmm. I'm not yeah. going to ask you what you did after that because I got to get back to Geneva. <laughs> okay. she's, still, she's still in college. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> All right. And uh, going on and graduating from college then what happened to Geneva? Uh, well, in fact, I graduated in May, like May 12th of 76, and we got married May 22nd of 76. All right. So we got married very soon after my graduation. And he was at um, Sam Houston State, and I worked there at the university for the dean of business for a year, and then we moved here to Dallas, and I continued my business career at LTV. At LTV, okay. And uh, what did you do at LTV and for whom did you work? And give us a little something okay. about that. I worked as a cost analyst for 15 years and my um, director at that time in, in, of engineering was, um, can't think of his name, oh, Bill Rhodes. Bill he Rhodes. came to me yes, in the engineering okay. department. I worked as a cost analyst, so I dealt with numbers, so I was still using that math background math. that was so good. Yes. And at LTV at the time, they encouraged the employees to go to school. All right. So I was teaching for Mountain View for about 12 years to employees. So I was kind of had my foot in the door of education and still dealing with numbers because I yes. was the cost analyst. And I love that. And at the same time at LTV, I got my master's at um, Abilene Christian at Dallas, which is now Amber University. Amber, yes, okay, that is wonderful. And uh, I'm going to get to you and, and get the rest of the story after we bring Stretch up now. Stretch, uh, you left Sam Houston? Yes, I left Sam Houston in- uh, To come to Dallas. August of 77 to come to Dallas, yes. Because your brother wanted yeah, you to come here. Yeah, my brother wanted me to come here and I was successful in obtaining a job for the uh, uh, for state parole, which is now Texas Department of Criminal Justice, but I, uh, at the time it was called the Board of Pardons and Paroles Division. Right. Mm -hmm. And I was hired in as a parole officer at All that right. time. We were resp responsible for supervising and providing guidance to people who had served uh, time in prison. All right. So I got a chance at a prison guard to see some of the people behind the bars, and I saw some of the same people after I when was out here out. as a yes, as a parole officer. That sure is something. Did. What an experience. All right, and what happened to you after that? Well, my, my career just rapidly advanced. After three years, I was no longer in the field as a parole officer. Mm -hmm. I was promoted to a uh, unit supervisor. All right. And then after about a year or two, I was promoted to a uh, parole supervisor. And then by the time I spent nine years there, I was promoted to chief. I was a regional supervisor uh -huh. for parole here in yes. Dallas. So yeah. it, it kind of moved kind of fast. And um, after about four years as regional supervisor, I uh, was offered a job with Dallas County yeah, all right. uh, by Ms. Colbreth, who's the Director of Health and Human Services. All right. So she, she made an offer that I really couldn't refuse. You know, I had a large staff at the time, when I say large, about 300. And she offered me a position that paid more, and I only had five people to supervise. To supervise. Oh, so man, that was a blessing, wasn't it? <laughs> yes, that was a blessing. And that's where you are now? No, no, no. I'm not there now. My no. department, which was the Charter Commission, and Charter yeah. was an acronym for uh, Children and Adolescents Residential Treatment Evaluation and Referral Commission. Right. And we were responsible for matching uh, kids with appropriate residential programs, looking at their risks, yes. looking at mm -hmm. their needs, and matching them with the appropriate program. And these were kids who were in the juvenile system. Even though we were two separate systems, we were responsible for the placement of those children, evaluating their progress, and evaluating those programs. Mm -hmm. And uh, in 95, the Commissioner's Court decided to move my department over to the juvenile department. I see. So that's how I got to the juvenile department. But after I was to the juvenile department, I really didn't work with placement anymore. I started working with electronic monitoring, establishing the Juvenile Justice Alternative Education Program, and some other area that I cannot remember. Right. But I don't work in those areas anymore. <laughs> All right. What do you do for a living now? Okay. I work for Dallas County Juvenile Probation Department. Right. I'm the manager of community programs. Okay. Uh, okay. I'm responsible for the Substance Abuse Unit, which we run a day treatment program for about 50 kids 
who are there uh, receiving counseling yes. services. We also have supportive outpatient services. We have home intervention services. I'm responsible for deferred, okay. deferred prosecution, which those are kids who commit uh, A and B misdemeanors, but they are not placed on probation. They are placed under an agreement, and if they fulfill this agreement, right. we would not file charges. You would not be placed on probation. Almost like a teen court. Yeah, yeah. But yes. we provide them services out there while they uh, living under their agreement. Uh, I'm also over uh, community service restitution uh, mediation uh, program. Uh, we have community liaison offices where we have uh, probation offices in, in several of the high schools in Dallas. And they kind of work with the, uh, I guess, truancy reduction in those high schools. And they've been pretty successful. Very successful. At that. Yes. Mm -hmm. All right, we're going to leave you for a minute. <laughs> okay. Well, then we're going to get into your community service. Well, I think we're going to have time for all of this, but we've got to get back to Geneva. I have her at LTV <laughs> and, and teaching at Mountain View and going over to Amber University and all this good stuff. Now where are we going? Okay, after I left LTV, after 15 years, I went to work for the Superconductor Super Collider yes, uh -huh. out in Wasahatchee as a cost analyst for yes. one year, and that's when the Congress decided to close it down. Bad so, choice, bad, bad choice. I agree. And so Stretch and I had a heart to heart at that point because I really wanted to go teach. Yes. And it was going to be a big sacrifice because, you know, I had been in cost work for 16 years and then I was going to leave totally and yes. go into education. Lose all of your credits and all of your And all account. that big salary. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so we talked about it. He knew that education was really my first love. So I start interviewing and I interviewed um, at all the school districts in the area yes. pretty much and I got a job at Truman Middle School in reading. Yes. Now remember I had an education degree but I was certified in business. And math. Right. <laughs> so I had to go back and get a reading mm -hmm. certification. Yes. So while I was at Truman Middle School teaching seventh grade reading I was also at UTA taking reading courses so I could learn to teach reading. So I was in school and teaching reading at the same time. Oh. And I loved it. Yes. It was good. That was my first, uh, I think, I thank Dennis Hale for giving me that opportunity in Grand Prairie yes. to teach as a- Very fine young principal. Yes, a beginning teacher. And it was a wonderful experience. The teachers were great mentors for me, encouraged me, and mm -hmm. you know, helped me along the way. And after I left, um, Truman, I got selected to be in a special reading program for the school district at Milam Elementary School. Yes. And it was called Reading Support. And, um, it's where the reading specialist would pull out six students who were having problems reading uh -huh. and, and comprehension. And we worked with those students 45 minutes every day, third, fourth, and fifth How graders. Wonderful. It was a great experience. And I did that for a year and a half, and then after that, I was selected by Zavala Elementary to be an intern, which is like the assistant principal, but mm -hmm. you're in the intern position, and I did that for two years. Yes. And where are you now? I'm at the Education Center now, serving as the reading facilitator for kindergarten through 12th. All of that responsibility. Yes. Isn't that wonderful? It's though? awesome. It is wonderful. It, it is awesome. It's How a challenge. And to think. <laughs> A, a small child born just so few years ago, maybe not wanting to go to college, but want going on to school, and with all of those mentors along the way, oh, yes. someone had to be watching over you. Oh, right? yes, yes. That is just really great. What a team you two make. <laughs> Thank you. All right, now we want to talk about uh, the Rideaus in Grand Prairie, Texas. Now, I first ran into you in, in a political scene. You were out running for a, some kind of an office. Yeah, I think, yeah. I think it was Justice of the Peace. Justice of the Justice Peace, of the uh -huh. peace. that yeah. was the first was, time. Uh, yes. I think in 1994. Uh -huh. But then you got really successful <laughs> when you ran for the, uh, state, uh, for the Grand Prix yeah. ISD Board of Education. Yes, right? and that was in 1995 after several people called me and encouraged me to, to run for school board. Was this all right with you, Geneva? Yes, I was willing to work hard. I knew it was going to be hard work. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. And she, Geneva, was already in the school system. Yeah, I, I knew she was in the school system yeah. by that time. But, but you, you, as a, a young man, uh, why did you want to be on the Board of Education? Mm -hmm. Well, you know, I've, I've always had an interest in young people. I do feel You can like tell by your, your work that you do. Yes, yes. 
uh, even though we do not have any children, yes, uh, and and that's by choice. We we made that decision before we got married, so yes. we haven't wavered. But you from have that. all of these other kids. Yes. You've got a million kids out kids. there that are yours. Yes, and that has has somewhat worked out well because as I look at the schools and make decisions about the various schools, I feel like I can be uh, somewhat either partial with all the schools or impartial with all the schools. Yes. I think if you if you had a child in school you might feel partial to that school. Uh -huh. And then if I go in that school to check on my child's academic progress, I don't think I would be able to take off the hat of a school board member. I would be able to do that, but I don't think I would be perceived as just a parent coming in. Uh -huh. I'd be perceived as a, mm -hmm. as a board member. But I, I love all our schools in the district. I, I feel the same about all of them. You, got uh, a good, you have a good <laughs> following here in Grand Prairie, Texas, because they have re-elected you to the school yes, board. Yes, yes. I was... Uh, <laughs> Re-elected in 1998, yes, and uh, of course with the with the new board, they decided to make me president of yes, the board. Yes, I, mm -hmm. I just think you're just so uptown, <laughs> getting to be president of the school yeah. board. Uh, some people have worked for six and eight and and 12 years before they uh, and worked their way up in the chairs to be president, and I think mm -hmm. that is a um, a real kudos for oh, Mr. Stretch Riddell. Thank you very much. I, I appreciate my, my colleagues mm -hmm. for allowing me to say All right, we have that. only two minutes left on the show. Do you uh -huh. have other interests? Do you have hobbies or anything you'd like to talk about? Or do you spend all your time till 1.30 in the morning at all the school board meetings <laughs> and forget the rest of it? Do you have a church or a lodge or anything yes. that you need to talk about? Yes, yes. Uh, we are members of Concord Missionary Baptist Church. Mm -hmm. That's on Boulder Street in, uh, in Oak Cliff. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm a deacon in church. Uh, mm -hmm. Geneva, she's, uh, she's in the choir in the church. Right. We've okay. both been uh, Sunday school teachers. Uh, we work in the uh, evangelism ministry. Mm -hmm. We've been there. Uh, we've been over the church anniversary. That's a blessed uh, congregation mm -hmm. to have two movers and shakers <laughs> like you too Thank there you. to help them Thank with all you. the good things. All right, uh, is there anything that you would like to say to, to end this uh, interview about your life before in, down in Beaumont and then all the way out to Sol Ross and now you have only one minute left. What do you want to say to the people of Grand Prairie and your school board patrons? One well, minute. And I'll well, wind you down like this. Okay. I gave you some time. <laughs> yeah, you surely did, Ruth. I just uh, I want to thank the, uh, the people of Grand Prairie for supporting me, uh, for supporting Geneva and supporting our family. We moved here in 1980 and I tell you the business community has been great to us. The people um, that have served us, either in stores or automobile shops, they have been wonderful to us. You know, so I, I appreciate, I really do appreciate that uh, this city has, has been good. Uh, the people have been very nice to us, very nice. And we're glad that we selected Grand Prairie to live in. Wonderful. And we're glad you all did, too. You have been two wonderful people to interview today. I want to thank you all very much for sharing your lives and being with us today. Thank you. Thank, thank you so much for inviting us. Yes, it's been really great. And this is Ruthie Jackson reminding you that history is as we live and do.